This tutorial is designed to introduce new users to the program Paint 3D. It assumes that you have absolutely no background at all in using Paint 3D or other drawing programs. We'll use a very basic step-by-step -step approach to creating projects with this program. Paint 3D is included with Windows 10 and it's a big advancement over versions of Paint that were included with earlier versions of Windows. When you start Paint 3D, it opens up with a welcome screen. We're going to take a tour of the user interface, so I'm going to hover the cursor over this new button and a tooltip pops up, reminding me that to click here, I will start a new project. Let's take a quick tour of the user interface of this program. Like most Windows programs, the top horizontal line is called the title bar. There you will see the name of the program and also the name of the file you're working on. Now because we started a brand new project, we haven't saved or named the project yet. The next horizontal line on the top of the screen contains the tools we can use. At the far right hand side, there's a tool that will toggle uh, show or hide the names in a menu. Let's toggle the names on. When you're first starting out, it's better to have the names of each of these tools appear and it will coach you along the way. We're going to start very simply by choosing the brushes tool. And when we choose the brushes tool, you'll notice that the sidebar on the right side of the screen includes a number of options that we can use. The first set of options are a set of 10 different brushes. If you hover on a brush, a tooltip will remind you the name of that brush. If you left click on it, you will select that brush to be active. The next area allows us to control the thickness of the brush that we're going to use. And then we have a slider that will control the opacity or the strength of the brush. There's an area here that allows us to choose a material. We're not going to worry about that until we get to uh, some three-dimensional objects. Down here is an area where we can select the color. So let's, let's try something. Let's select the red color and then draw a line using the marker. To draw lines, we have to move the, the cursor to the starting position of the line press the left mouse button down and while holding that button down we simply move the mouse and a line will be formed. To stop drawing the line just release the left mouse button. Left mouse button down, move the mouse, trace a line, mouse button up, stop the line. Select a different color, left mouse, and mouse button down, left mouse button up. Let's select a different brush. Let's use the paintbrush tool and paint with a little bit of gold. You notice that the paintbrush tool leaves streaks like the bristles would. And each time we choose one of these brushes, the default thickness will be set. In the case of the watercolor brush, it not only gives us a default thickness, but a default opacity. So now if we paint with watercolor brush, you notice that it doesn't completely cover the lines underneath unless we increase the opacity. The Pixel Pen brush allows us to do very th thin lines. The crayon tool allows us to make lines that are not completely solid. It's like a crayon that's rubbing on a rough surface piece of paper. The airbrush tool, we'll choose a color for airbrushing. It's similar to the watercolor tool, but it's more of a spray brush. Let's uh, reduce the opacity of the airbrush tool and you can see 
the lines underneath it when the, the opacity is not 100%. Make the opacity 100% and it will totally cover what was drawn before. And so this is a quick tour of the different brushes. Oh, there's one here that's called the eraser. If I click on that, I can erase whatever is under the cursor. This is a good time to pause the video, open up Paint 3D, and practice some of the things you've seen so far. You'll get a lot more out of these videos if you stop from time to time and try the things out. Experiment with the principles shown. Now that we've seen how the brushes work, let's explore 2D shapes. When we choose the 2D shapes tool, the right side of the display provides a whole collection of different 2D shapes that we can use. Let's try a circle shape. So I will click and drag out a circle. As soon as I create a shape, you will notice that the shape, when it's selected, will have these little markers at every corner and every midpoint. Those are called grab points. Watch the uh, cursor very carefully as the mouse is moved and the, around the screen. When the cursor is moved over the shape and you get a four-way arrow, you can click and drag that shape to a new location. However, if you put the cursor over one of the drag points, it turns into a two-way arrow. And in that case, you could drag that point to a different location. Notice the two-way arrow on this corner drag point. So I could move that around. Watch the shape of the cursor as you move the cursor around the selected object. So we have the grab points, but we also have three other tools. This top tool is a rotate tool. If I click on that and drag, I can rotate the selected shape to a new location. This is a clone tool. If I select that just with one click, it will make a copy of the shape. And now I have the new copy, the clone shape, selected, and so I can drag him around. And uh, I can resize that clone shape. I can also change the color. When a 2D object is selected, the panel on the right side of the screen provides a number of new options. For example, I can click on the line type color and change that to a different color. I can also change the thickness of the line. And I can do that manually by typing a number in the box as well as using the dragger. There's also a fill option and I can click on that and I can select a different color for filling the box. When I'm done working with that shape, this check mark will just finish the shape for me and leave it alone. Now, this is a quiz question for you. Do you remember how to undo the last thing you've done? The trick is control, hold the control key down and press the letter Z. Hold control down and press the letter Z. Let's create a new shape, a new 2D shape. How about a multi-point star? Click and drag. And there's your shape. It remembers the last fill color, which we can change, and the last line type color that we can change, and the thickness that we can change. So let's take this shape and use the clone tool, drag, move the move the copy, the clone, away from the original. Let's change his color and his line. And let's make him a little bigger. Let's clone this guy, drag him away, make him a little different shape, change the fill color, change the line color, and let's do one more clone. I'll drag this guy over here. I'm going to make him a little bigger. I'm going to rotate him. 
Uh, I'm even going to move them away here. Change the fill color. Change the line color. And finish that. Let's do a quick review of the 2D Shapes tool. Let me clear off the screen by using the menu, new, don't save the old thing. Now, choose the 2D Shapes tool. Uh, in this example, I think I'll choose a multi-point star and I'll drag out a star over here. That's a filled star. Uh, notice that uh, in addition to choosing a fill color and the color for the line type, I also once again have a thickness tool and an opacity tool. Let's just back off this and uh, what I want to do is I'm going to make the fill color be red, make the line color be yellow, and pow, put that one right there. You'll recall that there's a clone tool here so I'm going to clone that. I'm going to move it out, make it a little bit bigger, change the color, change the line color, and clone that, drag it out, change the size, uh, maybe we'll make this one smaller. Change the color. That's the fill color. Change the line type color. And clone it once more. Drag it out. Change the size. I could change the shape also. Move it around. Rotate it. Fill color. Line color. Click on the check to finish or click anywhere to finish that part. So, so much for the different shapes. You should experiment with those. Let's examine another option that's available when we're creating these two-day shapes. For example, I'll choose a circle tool. Now, when I left click and drag this out, you notice that it's not necessarily a circle. I can make it an ellipse of, of different proportions. Let me control Z and get rid of that and show you a trick of how to make a perfect circle. This time, I'm going to hold the shift key down. And while I'm holding the shift key down, now, no matter what I do, I can change the size of my circle, but it always remains a perfect circle. So if I choose the circle tool without holding the shift key down, it's not necessarily a circle, it's an ellipse. However, if I choose the circle tool and hold the shift key down, I will always get a perfect circle. By the way, that works also with squares. If I hold the shift key down, I'll get a perfect square. If I don't hold the shift key down, I get some kind of rectangle. So holding the shift key down on these different uh, 2D shapes will have an effect on the shape. I get a strain shape heart or shift key down, I get a standard proportional shape heart. Another class of 2D shapes are lines and curves. Let's start out with a straight line. Click and drag. Notice that I'm, I'm moving the mouse around after I anchored the first point and I can draw a line at any angle. If I click, whoops, I don't have anything, any tool selected, so let's back up. Click the line tool, click and drag. Now, just like there was a way to make a perfect circle, there's a way to make a perfectly horizontal line. Let me this time hold the shift key down 
and drag the line out. Now it's perfectly horizontal, or it'll jump to 45, or it'll jump to vertical. So I can, I can make horizontal, 45 degree angle, or vertical lines by holding the shift key at the same time I'm creating a line. Now let's try a couple of curves. We have three-point curves, four-point curves, five-point curves. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let me control Z a couple of times and get rid of these uh, lines. Let me create a circle over here or a, sort of a circle. And I'm going to make that thickness a little thinner for this and I'm going to do the fill. I'm going to make a yellow fill. Okay. Now I'm going to use the three-point curve to draw a line. And there it is. Now, as long as that line is selected, I have not only the grab points on the outside boundary, but I have grab points on the line itself. So I can move these grab points and I can turn that frown into a smile. Again, I can mess with the thickness of the line. I can mess with the color of the line. And we'll get eventually talk about opacity when we're drawing things on top of other things. Let me do another three-point line here. And let's clone that line. Move him over here. So we can fake in some eyebrows. By the way, we haven't talked about zooming. Zooming the display. There's a plus and minus tool up here. And each time I click on plus, I zoom in on the display. I'm not changing the size of anything. I'm just zooming in. Or I can zoom back out. I can have the same effect if I have a wheel mouse by rolling the mouse wheel. Now, if I roll the mouse wheel so far that not everything fits on my display, I have to look at the, hor uh, at the horizontal and vertical drag bars that allows you to pan around on the display. So, mouse wheel, panning, panning, and you can get up close and personal for your creations, for your projects. Sometimes you'd like to work very uptight, very uh, close to control these, the creation of the, the lines. In this case, it was a three-point line. There's also a tool right near this zoom in tool. If I click on this, there's some more view options and I can reset the view back to normal. So that if I get off in view space and I want to reset the view, I can do that. Well, that was a three-point line, the three-point curve. Let's do a four-point curve. Again, work similar to the three-point curve. I can drag these points around, do all kinds of interesting and fun things with four-point curves. And there's also a five-point curve. And again, you have the option to change colors, change thickness, all kinds of fun you can have with lines and curves in the 2D shapes menu. I hope as you're watching this video that you'll take advantage of the pause button on your player and every once in a while you should pause the video, open up your version of Paint 3D 
and play around with the things you just heard about it. Don't try to watch the whole video all the way through from beginning to end. You'll doze off and go to sleep. The trick is you should watch a little bit and then pause, experiment, create a few things, and then come back and watch the section. What we're doing with these videos, as you've seen, we're starting very simply just with the 10 brushes that are available and each section, once we get a little experience, we're going to move on to something a little bit more complicated. Now it's time for you to have a little fun. Here's a challenge for you. Pause your video and see if you can recreate this funny face only by using 2D shapes. Create the shape, best with the fill and line colors. Use the 2D shape to make the eyes and 3D curve, three point curve to make a nose and a mouth and a five point curve to make these eyebrows. Have fun. Well, the program is actually called Paint 3D. We've explored doing some 2D work with Paint 3D, but now it's time to get into creating 3D shapes. Once the 3D shapes tool is collected, the right side tool, or right side options panel displays another set of, of things to play with. Let's start with the 3D objects and let's start with just a basic cube. So I'll choose a red color and I'm going to click and drag and there's a cube. Well, it doesn't look like a cube yet, but notice this time that that cube that I've created, when, it, when it's selected, it again has drag points or grab points, but it also has rotation points. This one on, on the side will rotate the object around an X axis. If you've ever been in math class, you've thought about X, Y, and Z axis. Imagine a horizontal line right through the middle of this object. And when you drag this up and down, you're rotating the object around a horizontal line. Similarly, imagine a vertical line, a vertical axis or a Y axis through the middle of this. This tool will rotate that around the Y axis. And this tool is going to rotate the object around a z-axis, except in this th imaginary 3D space, you have to imagine the z-axis is coming right out of the screen at you, and the z-axis shows up as a point right in the middle of that 3D object. So when I use this tool, I'll be rotating around that z-axis that's in and out of the screen. Again, just like we did with the 2D objects, when the shape is, is selected, I can watch the mouse cursor here. Four-way arrow, click and drag, move it around. Two-way arrow, drag the grab point, change the proportions. Two-way arrow, change the proportions. Now, here's something new that we're into 3D. This canvas, this white area in this view, it's called the canvas. You have to imagine that as a piece of paper or a piece of wall painted white. This object is in the third dimension and it is out in front of that wall and by using this tool we can actually slide this object in and out with respect to that that canvas. Notice that I can put the object completely behind the canvas and then it doesn't show up much at all. I can also make the canvas slice right through the object so now I'm not seeing part of it because the other part of that shape is behind the canvas. So you can arrange things in the third dimension with this in out tool. Okay I'm done with this one so I'm going to click away and then I'm going to create a sphere. But let me change the color of this sphere and make a turquoise sphere. Okay, I get the same tools, but it doesn't, it's not very exciting to, to rotate a sphere around any of the axes because a sphere is a sphere. However, uh, I can 
make things change by moving this in and out. I can move this over here by the box that I created. And now when I move in and out in the third dimension, you'll see that it is either intersecting the box or again, I can have it move right behind the plane. So these are three dimensional objects and they can interfere with each other if they're coexisting in the same three dimensional space. Let me do one other thing with another sphere. I'm going to change from the matte material to the polished metal material, and I'm going to create another blue sphere. And notice the subtle difference now between those spheres. It has to do with the shading uh, off of the, the light falling off the surface. The difference has to do with the simulated light shining on these objects. And if, this, if the surface of the object is a matte surface, it's kind of nice and, and flat like that. However, if the surface of the object is polished metal, the light will reflect off of it a little differently. Okay, let me move this sphere out of the way. And uh, let me create, oh, I can create a cone here. Let me make the cone a different color. Drag out a cone. Uh, rotate it around the x-axis, rotate it around the y-axis, spin it around the z-axis, and notice that the cone remembers that, let me click away from here, the cone remembers that I was using polished metal. That's a lot different than I would use a dull metal cone, and you'll see that the, the light reacts differently from that. A little subtle but it is different. Okay, let's do another. There's a pyramid, there's a cylinder. Here's a cylinder with a hole in it, alias tube. Let's change the color to, uh, oh, let's make it a green. Let's make a green tube. Let's rotate it around the x-axis, rotate it around the y-axis. And we can use these grabbers to stretch it along the different directions. Let me do another one. This time I'll go back to, well, let's do a gloss just, just for the fun of it. Let me create another tube here. Or and this time, I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis until I'm out here more than 45 degrees. Let's see if I can get this to work. Yep. If you have that at a certain angle, you can stretch that in that direction. However, if I wasn't rotated at the proper angle, if I was rotated here more than 45 degrees, then it's stretching in a different axis direction. So if I want to lengthen my tube or shorten my tube, I can use this grabber if I've rotated it properly around the x-axis. Rotate it around the y-axis. I use that same grabber and that's still working. This one still working. However, if I get too far over, it's not stretching, or it's not lengthening it, it's stretching it. So these grabbers work differently now in 3D depending on the axis, the orientation of the object relative to the X or Y axis. I'm still in the 3D shapes menu and there are several categories of 3D shapes available. You've seen several 3D objects. Let's look at the 3D doodle object. Actually, there's two types of 3D doodles, sharp edge or soft edge. Let's create a 3D doodle sharp edge. So I'm going to just scribble out some kind of crazy line here. 
And when I get back to the starting point and release, then that object actually gets turned into a 3D shape. It used the outline that I sketched out by scribbling, but it created a 3D shape. Once again, I can stretch this, increase or decrease the depth if I'm in the right orientation in the x-axis. If I'm not, if I've rotated too close to the vertical in the x-axis, then all I'm doing is stretching my object vertically. However, if I get rotated around here more than 45 degrees, I can actually stretch the object or shorten it. So this is a, a doodle, a curious little doodle, but this is a doodle with a hard edge. So let me set that aside over here and let me change the color and let's make a soft edge doodle. So once again, I have to sketch some kind of silly shape. And as soon as I go back to that target, that starting point target, pop, it's created the doodle. And there it is. And once again, I have the option of stretching or make it stretch or skinny. Or again, if I get that angle at the right place around the horizontal axis, I can use that as a vertical stretching tool rather than as an in and out stretching tool. So here is a soft, what kind? This is a soft edge doodle. Again, I can use the in-out tool to move this guy with respect to the canvas, the plane of the canvas. And I can, oops, hold down on that. I can have these objects intersect with each other. So those are 3D doodles. Notice here's something that I haven't talked about before. Notice up here there's a select tool. I'm going to click and drag a selection box. I'm going to try to click and drag a selection box and see if I can capture everybody in that box. And now, <clears throat> since both of those doodles are in the box, I can work on them as a group. Uh, there's also grouping and ungrouping tools. We won't get into that for now. I'm just going to delete those because I want to look at a class of 3D models. Uh, I'd like to create a man and a woman and they are going to take on whatever color I have selected at the time I create it. So let me choose a man and drag out my man make him a little fatter, can rotate him around, whoops, can rotate him around the x-axis, I can rotate him around the y-axis, I can spin him around the z-axis, or I can control z and delete him. I don't want to have a green man. I would like to have more of a flesh-colored guy. What I'm going to do, I'll start with a basic brown color, and then I'm going to select the Add Color option. And that will give me this, this palette here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move around until I find something that is the, the sort of flesh color that I would like for this guy instead of being a little green man. Now when I create the man, he's going to have that new brownish color that I, I had 
created. Um, let's see if I can rotate them around here and make them a little fatter, make them real fat. Okay. So let's create, now that we've created a man, let's create a, a girlfriend for him. Let's choose a different color for the girlfriend. And she's tall and thin. So there are a couple of other 3D models here, stock models. Uh, let's create kind of a light yellow dog. Be a friend of theirs. Oops, I don't want the dog interfering with the lady. So I better move him away a little bit. And I'll let him look at his, his friends there. And also, I'm going to create kind of a gray cat. Big old cat here. And let's, let's have the cat looking back this way. And let's shove that cat back in. Oops, don't want to cut the cat off. Let's, let's push that cat around a little bit. Oh, that grows his tail. So I'll push him over here. I think I'm going to make the cat a little smaller. So there's a man and a woman and a dog and a cat. And you notice that when I create one of these 3D models, it's going to take on the color that is currently selected. Let me get rid of these guys. Select everybody, delete. And let's choose a gold color and let me make a goldfish. Big old goldfish here. Rotate them around a little bit. Actually, I'd like to rotate, well, I'll do this in a couple of steps. I want to introduce something new here. Stickers, something called stickers. There's a whole collection of stickers that I can pick up and glue on to things. Um, this would be kind of silly, but uh, maybe I'll, uh, let's choose a heart sticker and put the heart right there. And you notice what happens when I put a sticker on a 3D object, it actually wraps around the surface of the object. You see that? I've got to get them right on the object though, but I can get this, this sticker to wrap onto a 3D object. Well, let's, let's get rid of that, whoops, let's get rid of that sticker. I'm going to rotate this guy around the Y axis until he snaps right looking straight at me. And then I'm gonna have some sticker fun here. I'm going to choose a happy mouth and I'm gonna put a happy mouth on my fish right about there. Okay, and then I'm gonna give the fish some spectacles. And I want the spectacles to kind of wrap around the face of the fish, just a little bit like that. Now what happens when I rotate this fish around? Isn't that fun? So stickers are great fun. You can apply stickers to any 3D object. If I go back and create a 3D sphere, Well, I want to edit the color because I didn't want it to be the same color as that. Okay, here's a blue sphere. And then I go to the stickers and I choose this uh, star-shaped sticker. And there it is, wrapped right around that sphere. You can see that he's right on the surface of the sphere now. So stickers are great because they'll adhere to your 3D objects. However, if I would choose a sticker and create them on a 3D object, he will wrap around that surface. 
However, if I put the sticker away from the object, he's not going to be on the object, he's going to be on the canvas. I can find that out by looking at this tool, which is a 3D view tool. So now you can see that the sticker, the cloud sticker is on the canvas. Well, the fish and the sphere are not. The sticker became a 2D thing. I'll click the 3D tool again, get back to normal. The sticker became a 2D thing when I attached it to a 2D shape of the canvas. One more fun thing to do is let's clear this off again. Let's, let's start a new, a new project and let's create a 3D shape and let's investigate something slightly different. I'm going to create this, this donut shape, I'll rotate them around a little bit here and stretch them out a little bit. Let's go back to the, to the stickers menu. You notice there's a tab of stickers, but there's also a tab of what are called textures. So if I choose one of these textures and I paint it, I can paint that donut with a wood grain. So now this little tool when I'm in the middle of stickers will allow me to rotate the object a little bit. You notice if I get out of there, it'll put that, that texture not on the 3D shape, but over on the canvas itself. So I can use this texture tool to add textures just to a certain area of my 3D shape. Let's go do another one here. So what is happening there, you might ask? Uh, you should know the answer to this question. If I zoom in and out, you'll see that that, that donut is partly in to the uh, canvas back there. So you can apply textures to your 3D shapes. There are a couple more things that we need to visit about with regard to 3D shapes and 3D models in particular. Let me create another 3D model man. Whoops, I didn't want a yellow man. Control Z. Let's uh, use my brown color here for this man. Let me widen him out a little bit. And the, the point that I want to make about these 3D models is that you've seen already that you can apply a sticker to a 3D model, but also if we go back to our brushes, you can use any of these brushes to paint on a 3D model. For example, if I take the airbrush tool here, I can airbrush onto this guy's shirt have to be careful with the airbrush tool or I'll get past the boundary of his shirt. So you have to be very careful when you get into painting on the model. Also watch this. If I turn this around, you'll see that you, you're not, you can't see all of the model when you're, when you're in this paint mode. And so this is kind of a, a delicate operation here. Uh, you have to keep rotating your model around while you paint on the surface of the model, but the important thing is that that paint is actually following the 3D contour. It's following the 3D shape completely. Got a little bit up on his neck, so I better control Z, get that off there. Okay, this, this uh, airbrush tool is a little tricky to use. Might be better if I use the magic marker tool. Um, Better made it a little thicker, or I will never see it work. 
I can use the magic marker tool. And if I do that and zoom in, I can get a little more precise with where I'm drawing with the magic marker tool. Well, with a little work, uh, you can see that, uh, oops, I wanted to reset the view. With a little work, you can see that it's possible to, whoops, select. It's possible to paint right on your 3D model. And if you're careful with a combination of different paint brushes, you can actually uh, dress up your, your human models. Or I have a silly exercise in the, uh, tu the printed tutorial uh, that I created along with these videos. And the silly exercise I have has to do with the fish. Let's get rid of this guy and let's go find the fish. Let's make a goldfish. You saw that I put a silly face on a goldfish, but now I'm going to go back to the uh, stickers tool, but go to the textures and choose this fur texture. And uh, I can actually change the direction of this. I can actually paint fur onto the surface of the fish. Silliest thing you probably ever saw was a fur-covered fish. Actually, when I used to live in Colorado in the high country, they used to claim that there was such a thing as a fur-bearing trout because in the, in the high mountain lakes, uh, it would get so cold up there that the fish, to keep warm, actually grew fur. Uh, uh, well, some of my friends back east actually believed that when I told them. <laughs> but you can see how this works. I'm rotating that around to get the fur kind of in line with the way the tail fins would go. And that's great fun. So there's a fur tail fish. And how did I do that? I simply used the stickers texture options to create the fur tailed fish. But now here's something for you advanced users. And that is, it turns out that we can actually add our own picture files to the sticker collection. And this is pretty exciting. So behind the scenes here, what I did was I went off to the internet and I went to Google image search and I found a, a graphic that I copied with fish scales on it. And I copied that and I pasted it into a folder that I could find because when I, when I go browsing here, when I add the stickers, uh, I can tell it where to put them. So now I can use this uh, sticker and I can actually put scales on my fish. I'll drag this around. Drag this around, make sure I covered all his nose here. Gotta make sure his tail is covered. Okay, now let me rotate Mr. Fish around to the other side. And what I did was I actually, with my paint, with my regular paint program, I made two copies of these fish scales, one for left side and one for right side to improve things a little bit here. And now I can use my own custom stickers to add fish scales instead of fur to my little fish model. The next tool that I'm going to discuss here or demonstrate for you is the text tool. And the text tool has a couple of options, regular text and 3D text. And I'm going to be focusing on 3D text. There are options within this tool that allows me to choose what font I want to use. 
also the size of the font and whether it's bold or whether it's a line center you have those options also color option you have all those options within the 3d text tool so now i'm going to click notice that with this tool selected when i move the mouse out here the cursor has changed to a text cursor so i'll start typing 3d text And I can close the box and I can, by getting in the right place with my cursor, I can drag this box around. I can size the box, but I'd rather size the text. Okay, so let me click away from this, this text editing box and that will open up the 3D controls, similar to the 3D objects, only now I have a text object and once again, I can rotate it around the x-axis, and if I get in the right place, I can drag this to extend it. If I get less than 45 degrees, I'll make the text taller, tall and skinny. Grab tools work the same as they do with other objects, but now we have created 3D text. And once again, you can move that text with respect to your 2D canvas in the background there. This might be an interesting time to talk about the effects tool. Let's check that out. This text, this effects tool provides with several different color filters and a light wheel. If I choose this default color, it's already there. It controlled what's around here and the canvas color. But I can choose different colors, lavender, candy, taffy, spearmint, sand, etc. What happens with the light wheel in this case is it'll change the lighting. I'm, I'm spinning that little sunshine or light bulb around the light wheel and notice that what effects that have as the light changes on the surface of the text. If I would have gone back to my brushes and changed to the polished metal material, uh, let's do some gold polished metal, gone to the text tool, I want that to be gold, and created some new text Okay, I'll set my size, characteristics of the text, choose 3D text, and this time I'm going to say boo. How about boom? Click away from that, gonna make it bigger. I'm going to stretch it out. Oops, need to turn it a little more. Stretch it out, give it a little length, flip it back spin it around some. Now, edit the color, I still have polished metal. What should happen when I look at the effects and spin my wheel, as you see on the O and the B there, you see what, how the light is reflecting off the curved surfaces a little differently than it does off the flat surfaces. So, the effects tool allows you to change, in a minor way, lighting on your 3D objects, including 3D text. We've done a little bit of work with 3D models, but let's explore the 3D library. It turns out that Microsoft has a whole area in the cloud called Remix 3D. And they provide a large collection of 3D models that can be imported into Paint 3D. For example, here's a collection of 32 more animals. If we click on that, we can scroll down. Just for fun, let's add a duck into our model. So it's loading that from the internet. 
And here's a duck. I'll make them a little smaller. Turn them around. Spin them around so you can actually see that this is a 3D duck. Well, that was so much fun. Let's go find another one in the 3D library. Um, well, let's, let's put a nice Labrador retriever into the scene here. Move him over here. Rotate him around. And let's see where he is with respect to things. Well, I'm going to spin him around and have him looking at the duck. The point is that the 3D library has a large collection of models that you can find to add to your scenes or add to your projects. You can also search for objects by typing in a word here. What would be an object? How about chair? And so you see in the Remix 3D collection in the cloud, there are a lot of chairs that we could load into our model. There's one with Santa Claus sitting on it. It's also possible for registered Microsoft users to create models and upload them into this collection. So the 3D library provides a lot of options for importing models into your projects. And you see that there are different categories of objects. Here's a people category. And the people tab actually identifies different users of Paint 3D who have created their own models and made their own collections in the Remix 3D area of things that they've been playing with. Well, from time to time, I've mentioned this thing called the canvas. Uh, mentioned it as basically a 2D backdrop for things, but let's look at the canvas a little closer. There's actually a canvas tool. You have the option of turning the canvas on or off. You can also make the canvas transparent or not. You can resize the canvas. Right now, I have my canvas set to be 1024 wide by 768 tall. Uh, you can lock the aspect ratio if you're trying to create canvases uh, to match certain other things that you're developing. You have the option of creating this by percent or by pixels. And you can also rotate, flip the canvas. Let's paint something on the canvas here. Uh, how shall we do this? Why don't I go to stickers, uh, textures, and let's paint this leafy scene onto our canvas, just so we can see what's going on here. Now, we can rotate the canvas if you wanted to put it in portrait mode, rotate it back and forth, or you can flip the canvas left and right, or you could flip the canvas around the x-axis. So you have control of the canvas. Let me put a 3D model in front of this canvas. Oh, I'll put a little puppy dog, color him brown. Just put them out here somewhere in 3D space. And you've seen how we can move that model in front of or behind or in and out with respect to the canvas. And you've seen this tool that gives you a 3D view that includes the canvas and all of the objects. 
Here's a trick that we can use with a 3D view. If you're using a mouse, you can use the right button and you can rotate things with respect to the canvas. And you notice because I have the, the puppy selected, I can move him around even when I'm in the 3D view. If I want, I can put his head right into the canvas, right into the foliage there. To get back to a normal view, I can click on this tool for the reset view options and then click to toggle out of 3D view. So there's a lot you can do with the canvas as you're creating projects. As you scan across the toolbar, you'll notice that there is a tool over here to the right called History that I haven't explained yet. If I select that, you'll see that it's possible to record all of the steps that you used in creating a project. So if I was to drag this, this uh, slider across here to the very beginning, you can see step by step how I created the project that's on the display right now. And one of the options is to export your history to a video. So if you wanted to make a video that showed the process of creating a project, it's available right here on the History tab. The last thing I plan to discuss in this tutorial is the menu itself. You've probably used a menu to create a new project, but you can also use the menu to open an existing project, to insert things into your project, to save a project, and you can save the project either as a 3D model or as a 2D image. You can also save the project as a Paint 3D project. This will allow you to open it up in Paint 3D and continue to work. There's an option for uploading your models to the Remix 3D. This works if, you're, if you have a Microsoft account. If you choose the print option, you can print on your 2D printer, or if you have access to a 3D printer, you can actually print your model as a 3D object. There are sharing options, and you can go back to the welcome screen. There's a place here to use settings, and you can toggle various settings here on and off. Also, if you click on the learn and feedback tool, you'll see links to lots of additional tutorials to help you get the most out of Paint 3D.